Craft version 1 is live. Craft is the standard guideline for building with Web Studio. It contains a style guide, CSS variables, and more. I'm going to provide a demo and a little tutorial about how to get started with Craft. I'll even show you the power of Craft by showing how I change just six variables or inputs on my website and my entire theme switches from light to dark. Let's dive into Craft and give a brief tutorial on how to get started with it. Let's just insert Craft into a brand new project here in Web Studio by going to the marketplace, clicking on pages and scrolling down to Craft right here. I'm going to select Style Guide. When I do this, you'll see that I have a starter kit right here. I've got my containers, my sections, some very common colors like your color primary, secondary accent. I've got my buttons, links, elements. So I'm ready to start styling all of this right out the gate. But let's head up to the global route. This is where our CSS variables are at. We scroll down to the advanced section. We're gonna see there are a lot of different CSS variables right here. The absolute majority of the CSS variables come from open props. Open Props is an open source library separate from Web Studio of expertly crafted CSS variables. And then there are just a handful of additional CSS variables. So at the top here, we'll see that we have, for example, background colors, background card, background accent, background secondary, and we have our foreground colors like accent, secondary, primary. The best place to start is by first mapping all of your different colors and your styles to the different variables on the global route. Here is Web Studio's color palette. We've got our greens, blues, and so forth. And I changed out the different colors for my greens. I did the same thing with my neutral colors, my pinks, and, and whatever else you have there. Once those colors were in there, I started to customize what we would call semantic variables or alias variables. So when I'm styling my text, for example, I don't want to go into my color field and reference my blue directly. Typically, I want to have a semantic or alias variable that represents the color or names the color on what the purpose it's fulfilling. In this case, instead of my blue five or six or whatever it is, it's my foreground accent. And this enables us to change the color scheme over time, modify colors without having individual colors referenced throughout the site. Maybe that doesn't make too much sense, but let me provide a demo here of a project I built. It's this template. This template is a SAS template that has a light theme right now. I'm gonna change just these six variables. I typed them out in Sublime Text because Web Studio supports copying and pasting CSS, and this will kind of add to the wow factor when we paste them in. So all I'm doing is changing my foreground and my background colors, and I'm mapping them to the same color palette I have programmed in there. Okay, so I'm gonna copy this, paste these in. By pasting them in, they're just gonna update the values here, so I could very well go in here and manually update them, but let's paste them in and hit enter. Now, my theme has switched from light to dark mode. And just like I showed how we changed the light theme to a dark theme, you can do that with the style guide as well by copying these colors right here and pasting them into the global root. Now, the theme of the style guide will adapt to whatever your brand's colors are, so it, it's not necessary to change the theme right here. But if you want it to just start with a light theme as you add your different brand's colors in there, you definitely can do that. One more area I'll show you in the style guide here is that on the page, there is a template for new pages. That's right here at the bottom. So what I like to do is anytime I create a new page, I'll copy this, I'll go over and I guess we already have the home, so I'll use this and I'll paste it in here. And this provides that skeleton I'm gonna use on every single page that has my nav, my footer, my main, and my section. And then when I start developing the site or building the site, I'll duplicate this section, and then I'll name this one, let's say hero, and then I'll design it out. And then when I go down and I'm ready to start my next section, I'll duplicate it again, and then you know rename this to be logos. And this always keeps my template section on the page, and then it helps me just build a lot faster. That might be a personal preference way of working, but I found it to work really well and wanted to share it with you. And that completes the tutorial for Craft. I'll leave you with one more resource, and that is the Craft documentation. This contains the different standards and guidelines, whether it be naming conventions or how to create buttons like is button secondary and more. So I definitely recommend taking a look at the craft documentation. I'm very excited for craft because it creates a standard way for all of us to rally around. I want to give a big thanks to the community for contributing to craft. We've had a discussion about how to put it together and it's going to develop over time. So feel free to contribute to it. Well, craft unlocks so much, 
providing a starter kit for all of our sites to use and rallying around that naming convention so we can share our projects and for those things that we insert into our own projects to adapt to our theme. And it also reduces the learning curve so you can jump from project to project and feel right at home. Craft is a big advancement in the standard way of doing things on Web Studio. I'm really excited for it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.